The pivot table is an interactive worksheet table, and it's used to quickly analyze and summarize large amounts of data. Just how large is my database? Well, if I hover over the bottom border of the selected cell until I can see a four-way arrow, double-click really fast, and it takes me to the end of it. And it has 109 rows. The first row is a header row, so I have a total of 108 records. To get back to the top, hover over the top border of the selected cell and double-click really fast. It takes me to the top. And then to insert the table based upon this database, click anywhere in it and come up here and click on the Insert tab, go to the Tables group, and click on Pivot Table. If your database has been built correctly, by default it will automatically select it. You can see I get the marching ants around it. But if it doesn't select it for you, then you may have design flaws with your database, in which case I recommend that you watch my training video on design flaws and sorting. Assuming that you've seen that and you're like, it's still not selecting it. And then you can go ahead and click the collapsible dialog box button for select a table or range, and then click and drag to select it. Or you can go ahead and type it in, like cell A1, colon, which means through, and then H109. Hit the enter key on the keyboard to pop it back open. And then where do you want to put the pivot table report? By default, it's going to be the new worksheet. I'm good with the defaults. So let's go ahead and click okie dokie, and there we go. We have the skeleton over here for the pivot table. We haven't added any flesh to it until we go over to the pivot table field list and start checking the boxes, which is over to the far right. And these fields here are being pulled from my database. Where's the database? Well, it was on sheet one, and it's still there. And we've got the fields here, the labels for the columns, the company, salesperson, order ID. Back here, we've got company, salesperson, and order ID. So to start adding them to the pivot table, I can go ahead and just check them, or down below it says drag the fields between areas below, or drag it down to the areas below, and we have a total of four. Now to understand this, the column and rows can be for our labels, or can be for the labels, and then any fields that contain values will be in this quadrant here. So let's just go ahead and start checking the boxes. I think the best way to do it is just dive right on into it. And the fields that I like to see in my pivot table are the salesperson's name. And you can see over here it adds them. And it added it down below in the rows. So there it is going by rows. And then let's go ahead and check the shipping date, the product name, and the total quantity sold. Then down below you can see that the total quantity is a number. And you can see it over here, the sum of the quantity sold. So it added over in the values quadrant. And then you got the, for the rows, the hierarchical structure. We have on top the salesperson. There's the salesperson. And then below that we have months. And then below that we have the actual date in the month for the sales. So I can come down here and go ahead and click and expand January. Or if I want to expand all of them instead of just January here. Then I can come up here on the Analyze tab to the Active Field group and click on Expand Field and expands it for all of them. If I don't want to see them expanded to see the products that were sold on January the 15th, with the field selected, I can go ahead and click on Collapse, and then we're back to where we started. Let's go ahead and expand it so we can see the products sold for that date, and then the products sold for that date for each salesperson, and then the total quantity sold. And let's see, for the total here is 70, and you get the subtotals down below, so you have 51 plus 19 is 70, and then the totals that make up that subtotal there, you can see when I select it down below on the status bar is 51, and then when I control click, 19, the subtotals, and 51, you can see it adds up to 70, so it checks out. Now, as far as these names go, like sum of quantity, if that doesn't make sense to you, like you want the total quantity sold, you can change the name of it by either right-clicking on the label here and going down to Value Field Settings and typing over it with your custom name, or close out, you can come over here and click on its corresponding drop-down arrow and go to Value Field Settings there as well. And so go ahead and delete that and type in Total Quantity Sold. And if you don't want to summarize it by the total with the sum function, maybe you want the maximum the highest value that was sold during that period of time, then go ahead and select max. You can see it says max of quantity sold, so click okie dokie. Let's update it and see which product had the highest number in sales for that person. And it looks like 24 for Bob Appleman, the, the sales he made on January the 15th and the 21st. And you can see there it is. The highest for that range for Bob Appleman is 24. The highest for Britt Hume is 30. Fabulous. Let's go ahead and change it back. So let's right click on max of quantity and go down to value field settings. And let's go back to adding up the total amount that was sold for each employee. 
and it wants to go back to sum of quantities, so we can delete that, type in. And in addition to this, if you want to change the number format, come down here and click on the number format button. You can choose if you want it in currency, and if you choose currency, maybe you want the different symbol because maybe the sales, if it was the price multiplied by the total sales, maybe it was done in. Russia, you can go ahead and choose the Russian ruple. Let's go ahead and click cancel. We've got the total quantity sold. Click okie dokie. We're good. You can also sort, so you can see over here for the month of January, the 15th, it goes ascending. So F before S, then T. If you want to sort it descending within that month, right click and then go to sort. And we'll do Z to A. So it flips it. So the lower end of the alphabet goes all the way down to the upper end. You can also do it by employee. Let me go ahead and hit undo and right click on Bob Appleman. I think Max Klinger is at the end, sorted at the end. But if we flip it and say we want to sort descending Z to A, then okay, he's at the lower end of the alphabet for all the employees that we have working for us. Now let me go ahead and undo that. And then to see the grand total for everything that's been sold, you can either scroll down to the end of the database or hover over the bottom border of a selected cell and double click really fast. Or you can come up here to the active field group on the analyze tab and we can go ahead and collapse. So if we click collapse, depending upon your selection, it's going to collapse it for everybody, for all the salespeople, as opposed to if I expand it and collapse it for the selection here. Click collapse, it just does it for the products sold on that date for that month. So again, you want to make sure you've got it selected right before you click collapse. Then there's the grand total. We sold 1,048 products. And let's go ahead and expand it. And let's do it also for the dates for each month. Expand those as well. You can also show the values as by percentage if you'd like. Just go ahead and right click on the value here. Go down to show values as, and you can do the percent of grand total. So the grand total is 1,048. What percentage does that person have of that in sales? You can choose other options, but I'm going to choose percent of grand total. And so Bob Appleman did 6.68%. Ooh, there we go, Brent Hume. He's moving up. Almost 10% of the total sales he made. Cool. And I'm going to go ahead and change it back so it shows no calculation by percentage. Right click. Go down to show values as, no calculations, so we're back to where we started. Now you do get the filter option for your row labels, which by the way, when you select it, you can come up here. In the active field group on the analyze tab, you can see it's salesperson. It doesn't say salesperson. You can go ahead and rename it there, but it's not going to overwrite the name for your row labels, which includes everything down below in the row quadrant. In any case, you can do it sales. Let me come over here and type in S, salespersons. And then you can see when I come over here and scroll up, you can see when I hover over it, it says salesperson, so what let's do for quantity sold. Instead of right clicking and going down to value field settings and trying to rename it, you can just come up here, again, name it, just say, let's do sold, hit enter, updates that. And then down below, instead of total quantity, it's total sold as well. It doesn't update the original labels though. It still keeps it as quantity, but for your all intents and purposes on the front end of the database, this is how you want to see it. Which, by the way, if you don't want to see certain things within your database, you want to pivot or filter, you can click on the row labels drop down arrow, and you can say that you want to filter for salesperson, for months, for dates. And if you select months, you get the list of the months down below. But let's go back to salespersons and say that, let's uncheck all and say we just want to see Bob Appleman. Click okie dokie, and now we're just focusing on him. We pivoted to him and say, I don't want to see anybody else, just him. And then notice here, as we learned in an earlier training video, when you filter for something, it adds a little funnel next to that triangle to let you know that if you're like, okay, these are all the employees we have, Bob Appleman, he's the only one that made sales. No, just look up above, and when you see a funnel, you know that something's being filtered. So let's go ahead and click on the drop down arrow and go ahead and say select all. And then if you want, you can go ahead after you click OK to keep it simple, go back, click on the drop down arrow and say you want to select products, unselect all, and say you just want to focus on air mattresses, click okie dokie, and there's all the sales for air mattresses. Let's click on the drop down arrow, let's go back to product, and select select all, click okie dokie, and we're back to where we started. Now you have that option, or if you want, you can rearrange this, as it says here, drag fields between areas below, to kind of figure out how you want to view your data in the pivot table. 
So I can go ahead and take the salesperson, hover over that field down below until I can see a four-way arrow, click and drag it, and let's put it up in the filters. Where does that take it? Up here, just above it, and that's what we're doing is we're filtering for the database by salespersons. And it doesn't show you the salespersons down below, so if you want to see them, then I wouldn't move it up to the filter spot, which brings up another good point. When you move it up there and you click on the drop-down arrow, whoops, hey, I can't choose multiple items. Well, go ahead and select this, and then you can go ahead and uncheck and say you just want it for Bob and Britt. Click okie dokie. And then you'll have to remember it's being filtered for Bob and Britt because it doesn't have their names listed down below. You can see there it is filtering it for that. And you can do a double filter. Click on the drop down arrow and say for months. Let's go ahead and deselect all. We just want January and February and click okie dokie. And there we go for both of them. There's the total sales for January. Nothing for February though. Otherwise, it would have pulled it in. Now, if you get a lot of these filter fields, instead of clicking on the drop down arrow and selecting all again, you can come up here on the Analyze tab to the Actions group, click on the drop down arrow, click on Clear, and say that you want to clear the filters and you're back to where you started, showing it all. And let's go ahead and scroll down and change the hierarchical structure and click and drag the product so it's above months and dates. And so, actually, let's go ahead and get rid of the months, click and drag that off. When I drag it off, you can see a little X below my pointer. When I let go of it, it just goes back to dates, so I no longer have to worry about the months, but just the exact date. So we have the product, we sold a total of 50 on these dates. And if I want to group them back by months, go ahead and select any one of the dates here. Come up here on the Analyze tab to the Group Group, and click on the drop-down arrow, and say you want to go ahead and group the selection or group the field opens it up and it says, okay, starting at within the database from the initial start date of what I have in the database to the ending date. And there we go. It'll group by days and by months. Click okie dokie. Now we have it grouped by months. And then there's the days. If I didn't want to group it by days, then I can go ahead and hit undo and try it again. Click on group. Group selection. Get rid of days. Just group it by months. Click okie dokie. And boy, you could have fun with that and get very particular with your dates. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos, and for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.